Have you ever tried a reverse felting needle? You can use it to make fluffy fur like on this cute baby bunny. But there's so much more you can do with it too. I'm going to guide you through the different ways that you can use the reverse needle. I'll share top tips to get the best out of it. And there may be some things that you've never thought about. So watch till the end, you might be surprised. So what tools do I need? I find it's useful to have reverse needles in two different sizes and a couple of each. So I've got the 36 gauge and the 40 gauge. And then I have some more regular needles for starting off my shape and making it nice and firm. And then some other needles for finishing a bit later on. And then I have my lovely scissors to trim away any excess fibres. I also find it useful to have a multi-needle tool so I can really speed up my work as well. This is the Clover multi-needle tool that holds up to three needles. And finally, some sort of small brush. I use an eyebrow brush. It's great because it has two sides to it. The bristly side for fluffing up and the comb side for straightening and defining. I'll pop some links in the description of where you can find these tools as well. But what is the reverse felting needle and how is it different from a regular felting needle? In this diagram you'll see that I've zoomed in closely to see the tips of two of my favourite needles. This is the 40 gauge triangle on the left and the 38 gauge star on the right. What you'll notice is there's a number of tiny notches along the edges of the needle where I've pointed to them here in the diagram. And this orange shape here is to represent one of the notches. The notches are curved and the sharp point at the very top of the curve, which we call the barb, is pointing downwards. So as the needle enters the wool, these barbs catch on the wool fibres, pushing them down with a downward movement. The wool fibres have tiny scales, so the wool locks into the other fibres, so compacting the wool as you repeatedly stab with the needle. The barbs facing downwards means that you can pull the needle out again with no resistance. It will glide out smoothly. And here on the right is one of my reverse needles. So this is a 36 gauge reverse felting needle. Again, you can see the notches along the edges of the needle. But when you look closely at the notch, again, I've represented the notch with this curved shape in orange. You'll notice that the sharp barb is at the bottom and facing upwards. So when the needle enters the wool, you may find it feels strange as it will have no resistance. It will glide in smoothly, but you'll feel the resistance as you pull out. As you pull, the barbs catch on the wool and the fibres pull out with it. The result is fluffy fur. Creating fluffy hamster fur. This is Teddy, my hamster. My demonstration of the reverse felting needle today will be based upon his beautiful soft apricot fur. To achieve that lovely tone that he has I'll need to mix my merino tops together so the dark rusty orange and the ivory colour. You can do this with hand carders or I've just hand blended these. You can use coarser types of wool but Teddy is one of the softest furred creatures I have ever known and so I want to use soft wool to replicate that. I'll make three balls for three results. Before reverse felting you'd need to have made your sculpture by using needles such as a 36 or 38 gauge. For example, the 38 star or the triangle. Then moving on to a higher gauge, such as a 40 gauge triangle. As you firm up and finish your sculpture, you'll need to move up to the higher gauge needles as you feel more and more resistance. And it's great for surface felting and getting rid of all those little bumps. I also use a 38 or 40 gauge twisted to finish off with a smooth and even surface. Try to make sure that your sculpture is well felted and really firm. When you come to use the reverse needle and pulling some of the fibres out, particularly if you're working on a small sculpture, it can lose some of its density and if it's too soft and too loosely felted, it can lose stability. I'm going to start off with my 40 gauge reverse. If you stab the needle in too deeply, it may have some issues coming out. So try to surface felt as much as you can. 
with this 40 gauge tiny hairs will pull out with the needle. It will feel strange at first but as you pull you will soon get used to the feeling of pulling rather than stabbing down. Try to pull your needle out fully on each action. You can see it's already looking really fluffy. Now I'll show you the 36 gauge reverse. This is a thicker needle and even when I put it in slightly you'll see that it's pulling out far more than the other one did. This is why you need to have really made your sculpture firm to start with. You can see already that it's brought out far more of the wool. This needle is great for if you've got loads and loads of fur to do over a whole animal for example like my bunny earlier and the length is slightly longer as well I'll carry on in a speeded up mode and then you can use your scissors to give it a good trim if you've got a lot of fur to do then you might want to use a multi-tool like this one by Clover for what I'm doing I'll just use two needles together but you can use up to three in this tool now be careful when using the tool as there's a lot that will tug out. You'll soon get used to how deep you need to go. But using more than one needle at a time will really speed up the process. I'll speed up the camera though and show you the result in a second. And there we go, lovely fluffy fur. And then trim to the length that you'd like it to be. You can use the bristly side of the eyebrow brush to give that fuzzy, fluffy look. And although you'll be pulling out fibres in such a way that there won't be any gaps in between, this is a good way to cover up any tiny gaps. Or if you'd like to use the straight comb edge, you can use that to neaten and define the fibres. It can really help to start one end of your animal, like the tail end, and work towards the head end so that your fibres fall in the right direction, just like on the real animal. Even though I'm experimenting on this ball here, I can really imagine how my sculpture of the hamster will start to look with all that lovely fluffy fur. When I make my Mr. Bumbly Bee, I use the reverse felting needle on the black and yellow bands and use the solid colours all the way through. You can see the top part hasn't been done yet. And here he is, all beautifully fluffy and finished. If you'd like to make your own Mr. Bumbly Bee, I have a PDF tutorial on how to make him. Here's a link to the video preview. I'm now going to take the orange ball to show you the next effect. I'm going to attach some of the ivory colour onto the orange colour. This is with my regular 38 or 40 gauge needle. Then going just under the surface with my reverse needle, I'm going to pull out those wispy bits through the layer. And you can see that there's a blending happening. <laughs> no, it's not your turn yet, ivory ball. Some of the orange is coming through, but also a little bit of the ivory, so you're getting a nice blend of colours. And I'll give it a trim. It's a lovely blended effect. I'll continue just so you can see a larger patch. But this is a great example where you could use a darker core wool underneath and add a lighter colour on top and then you can have highlights and low lights. And if I compare it to my original ball, you'll see it's very similar, although slightly different. It's slightly darker, 
and if the fibres that you're pulling out are not close enough to each other you may see some of the ivory underneath. With board number three I'm first of all going to reverse felt some of the ivory colour as it stands to replicate Teddy's tummy fur. If you remember, he's not just an apricot colour, but he's got that lovely ivory colour going through on his tummy as well. And now I'm going to add a lovely thin layer of the orange on top. Then I'll pull those wispy bits through with my reverse needle. The orange and the ivory are blending, but the ivory is coming up more dominant, so it's a lot lighter than before, like with ball two. And if we compare it to the first ball, it's a lot lighter. If we bring all three together, you can see all the different effects together. I'm now layering an even thicker layer of the orange. When the colours blend, it'll be slightly, just a tiny gradient darker. This is a great way of adding subtle tone changes. I really love the effect that you can get when you pull the light through the dark. So there we have it, three balls with three different blending results. Stubbing down the fluff. After you've reverse felted, you can also use a regular needle to stub down the fluff. So rather than leaving it a fluffy finish, you can actually blend further, adding little highlights or lowlights. So all I'm really doing is teasing the fibres with my needle, kind of combing it and defining and flattening it down. I'll demonstrate this further on my koala. I want to add some lighter bits on its face and so I want to use the reverse needle to bring through some of the core wool that's underneath which is a lot lighter than the grey. I'm using my reverse needle to pull the fibres through to fluff up to start with. Pulling just tiny bits but then with my fingers pushing it down and then using my eyebrow brush to comb the fibres against the face. I can then use my normal needle to stub the fluff down into the layer below it. Ever so carefully, you can achieve a lovely subtle blend of colour. It's a similar thing with Luna, my hair. She's a real mix of carded slivers with merino and in certain areas I wanted to bring some of the lighter colour through. So I use my reverse needle to pull some of the Coradel wool from underneath. and simply stab it down with my regular needle. I'll do a little bit on the face here as well to show you, but I just want to show that with making realistic looking animals, it's, it's an amazing thing to be able to use the reverse needle and some of these techniques to really blend and make those subtle little changes in the fur tones. And next we have the mottled look. I'll show you this on my orange ball. This is another method of stabbing the fluff down, but rather than it being long wispy bits and stabbing it down straight, we're cutting it right down short to start with. 
and then when you stab it down you're going to be creating that kind of spotty kind of mottled look almost like a marble effect i'll speed this up because it takes a little while i'm also using my twisted needle because the surface needs to be quite even and i don't want to show any holes You can then leave it like that or you can also brush it slightly. It gives a lovely effect. With my recent Springer Spaniel, I did this very same effect around his nose. In this case, I added the darker wool, brought the light through, but kept it really short and made a mottled look. I was back and forth with the reverse and then the normal needle quite a bit. It's the same with my tabby cat face where I wanted to add the little spots where the whiskers go. I didn't want them to be quite so contrasting but have a more kind of subtle look and blend more into the face. So I pulled the fibres through and stabbed them back down. So not to be fluffy but to blend in for a more mottled look. And finally, I'd love to share with you how you can attach paths. We're making a Scottish wildcat here and I've more or less put the ears on, but they're not completely attached and they could do with a little bit more stabbing. So for the most part, I would use my regular needle, such as a maybe a 36 gauge or maybe a 38 gauge at the highest. Um, and I would be stabbing through, for example, with this ear, I would stab from the ear through to the head and I would keep stabbing until it attaches but as a little extra thing just to really pull those fibres together going in and actually pulling the fibres from the head through to the ear is another extra kind of secure way of attaching and in this case you can go really deep don't worry about surface belting um, you can literally just really pull those fibers you can feel yourself pulling them from the head through to the ear and then if there are any fibers that have come fluffed up you can just stab them down again so what did you think i hope you enjoyed this video and you've maybe learned some new techniques today about the reverse felting needle